Hello, everyone. This is Lin Jiang. Thanks for coming to my talk. In this talk, I will introduce a bit parallel fast-forward technique to accelerate JSON data streaming. This is a joint work with my PhD advisor Zhi Jia Zhao. Let me start with some background. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. A typical JSON data record consists of many objects and arrays that are nested within each other. A JSON object is a sequence of key-value pairs, also known as attributes, while a JSON array is a sequence of ordered values. JSON belongs to a type of data that is generally known as semi-structured data. It is the de facto standard for data communications on the web, and the underlying data format for document-oriented data stores like MongoDB and Firebase. Developers have also proposed many variations of data types based on JSON. So there are great interests in improving the performance of JSON data processing. In general, there are two basic strategies for processing JSON data. The first one is the preprocessing-based strategy. One example of this strategy is to first pass the raw JSON data into a parsing tree, which is stored inside the memory. Then queries to the data can be evaluated by traversing this tree top-down until matches are formed. There are many popular JSON parsers developed for this purpose, such as Jackson, RapidJSON, and so on. Alternatively, some researchers recently proposed an indexing-based solution, which first builds bitmaps for relevant meta-characters in the data stream called structural indices. With the help of these pre-constructed indices, JSON queries can be quickly evaluated by traversing the relevant indices at different nesting levels. Regardless which specific data structures are created, either a parsing tree or the structural indices, there are two major issues with the preprocessing-based strategy. First, it introduces a significant delay up front during the preprocessing. Building the parsing tree and structural indices can be quite time-consuming. Second, the constructed data structures may consume a large chunk of memory, especially for large JSON data. Fortunately, both issues can be naturally addressed by adopting a streaming-based query evaluation strategy. The high-level idea is to combine parsing and querying into a single pass. To achieve this, a recent work, JPStream, proposed a dual-stack pushdown automaton which encodes the query matching and the parsing logic into a set of transition rules. In this way, it not only achieves better data locality, but also eliminates the needs of constructing any in-memory parsing tree, thus minimizing the memory footprint. Though streaming evaluation sounds promising, its existing design requires to scan the entire data stream in detail, including identifying all the tokens and syntactical structures, and feeding them into the query automaton to track the matching progress. However, is this detailed scanning really necessary? Interestingly, in this work, we found several groups of cases where certain data segments don't need to be examined in detail, thus can be fast-forwarded. However, it is challenging to perform the fast-forward efficiently. To address this, we proposed a highly bit-parallel solution. Finally, we realized our solution as a new JSON streaming framework called JSON Ski, and we compared its performance with several state-of-the-art JSON processing tools. Next, I will go over these contributions in detail. First, Let's take a look at some examples where fast-forward is applicable. Consider this JSON pass query, which is to find the name attribute of place. Based on the query structure, V 
we can easily infer that place should be an object, otherwise it should have an attribute. Based on this type information, the streaming may directly fast forward to an attribute of object type. In this piece of example data, the streaming can fast forward over the first attribute, which is an array, then resume the query matching from the second attribute, which is an object. Furthermore, when the query matching finds that the attribute is not the one we are looking for, at this point, the streaming can fast forward over its corresponding value. As shown in this example, the attribute name user doesn't match with the place. As a result, its value, which is an object, can be fast forwarded entirely. Even in the case where query has been fully matched, we may still perform fast forward. As shown in this example, after both place and name are matched, the streaming can fast forward over the matched value and output it without examining its syntactical details. In this work, we found several groups of cases where certain kinds of fast forward are applicable. You can find more details about them in our paper. Even though the idea of fast forwarding appears promising, there is a problem with implementing this optimization. Intuitively, in order to locate the target position of a fast forward case, we still need to perform the detailed parsing. For example, in order to go over an object, a naive solution still requires to identify the object first. This creates a chicken-egg-like problem. How can we solve this dilemma? In this work, our solution is to design a much faster way to realizing the fast forwarding, a highly bit parallel solution. At high level, it has three major components. A new streaming model called recursive descent streaming a concept for partitioning the data stream into basic logical units called structural interval, and a group of bit parallel algorithms which implement different fast forward cases. Let me start with the streaming model. Unlike the existing dual stack streaming automaton, which is purely based on formal transition rules, our solution combines the classic recursive descent parsing with the query matching automaton. The idea of recursive descent parsing is simple. Basically, we define a function for each structure in the grammar. Because the structures could be nested, the functions are naturally recursive. To integrate them, we can simply insert the query automaton transitions into the recursive functions. This design can greatly simplify the streaming logic. More importantly, it makes it easier to adopt the fast-forward optimizations. As you can see here, the fast-forward APIs can be naturally embedded into the recursive parsing functions to achieve the fast-forward effects. This is the first major component of our solution. The second major component is a concept called structural intervals. A structural interval is a sequence of characters from the current streaming position to the next meta character of interest. The slide here shows some example structural intervals, like the colon interval, open bracket interval, and so on. As I will demonstrate shortly, the reason we introduce this concept is to simplify the design of bit parallel algorithms. A key feature of the structural interval is that it can be represented using a bitmap, and the bitmap can be constructed quickly with bitwise parallelism. Due to time limits, I will not go over the algorithm in detail. With the above preparation, now let me introduce the algorithm for fast-forwarding. The key question in fast-forwarding 
is to locate the target position of a fast forward case. To find out the answer, our algorithm traverses the data stream interval by interval, and for each interval, it leverages a brackets pairing property to determine the boundary of an object or array. As shown in this example, to go over an object, the algorithm first builds an open parenthesis interval, then finds the closed parenthesis within this interval. If it finds some closed parenthesis, then the first one should be the end of the object. Otherwise, if no closed parentheses are found within this interval, then the object has not yet ended, so the algorithm will move to the next interval until it finds the ending position. In our paper, we have some theoretical conclusion to back up the correctness of this algorithm. With the above design, the whole fast-forward operation exposes a great amount of bit-level parallelism. The pseudocode on this slide shows the implementation of a fast-forward API going over an object. All the blue-colored instructions are bit-parallel. In this work, we have implemented around 20 fast-forward APIs, all of which are centered around bit-level parallelism. They can be easily adopted based on the needs of streaming analytics. Putting them together, we prototyped a JSON streaming framework called JSON Scheme. To evaluate its performance, we've compared it with several state-of-the-art JSON processing tools, including RapidJSON, a JSON parser from Tencent, JPStream, the existing JSON streaming framework. SIMD JSON, a popular SIMD based JSON parser, and Pigeon, an indexing based JSON preprocessor. Among them, GPStream and JSON Ski follow the streaming strategy, while the other methods follow the preprocessing based strategy. The data sets used in our evaluation are collected from real world applications. We set the size of each data set to 1 gigabyte by default for either performance comparison. Each dataset comes with two formats, a single large record or a sequence of small records. The queries used in our evaluation are standard JSON pass expressions. For each dataset, we created two JSON pass queries. Together, they provide a spectrum of coverage on different query structures, as well as the selectivities. Our evaluation were performed on a 16 cores machine with 128 gigabytes of memory. Its CPU supports 64-bit ALU operations and 256-bit SIMD instructions, just like many other CPUs today. This figure reports the total execution time on processing single large records. First, comparing to the existing streaming tool, GPStream, we find JSON Ski runs over 12 times faster, thanks to its bitwise fast forward optimizations. Second, comparing to other SIMD based JSON tools, JSON Ski is about 3 times faster than Pigeon, and more than 4 times faster than SIMD JSON. In terms of small records processing, the performance results are similar, except that most methods run a bit faster thanks to the better cache locality. In addition, we also evaluated parallel performance with multi-threading. For small records, we let a thread process a small record each time, one by one. The figure on the left shows the execution time using 16 threads. In general, all the three methods score well. For a single large record, some prior works like JPStream and Pigeon support speculative execution, while JSON Ski currently doesn't have this feature. The results show that the single threaded JSON Ski still runs faster than JPStream with 16 threads, 
Ball runs around 1.5 times slower than Pichon with 16 strands. In terms of the memory consumption, we can see that JSON Ski achieves the lowest among the evaluated methods, similar to the GP stream, thanks to their streaming design of processing. While the other non streaming methods take substantially more memory due to the construction of either parsing trees or the structural indices. Finally, I want to briefly mention the ratios of fast forward, that is, the ratio between the number of fast forwarded characters and the total length of the data stream. As you can see here, even though the ratio varies a lot across different cases, the overall fast forward ratios are very high, all above 95%. A main reason behind this is that our solution can perform fast forward in both the matched and unmatched cases. In summary, here are a couple of takeaways from this work. First, we found that it is actually unnecessary to scan the data stream in detail for evaluating JSON queries. In fact, there are a lot of opportunities to fast forward over many data segments. Second, we have demonstrated that fast forward optimizations can be implemented very efficiently by leveraging the bitwise parallelism. We have already released a prototype of JSON Ski on GitHub. Please feel free to check it out and let us know if you have any questions. Thank you for your attention.